Welcome to Champagne Gains, the podcast where we pop the cork on the world of fitness competitions, lifestyle, and everything in between. I'm your co-host, Becca Mickelson, nutrition coach, personal trainer, and NPC bikini competitor. And I'm Kiki, IFBB pro bikini athlete and coach. Together, we'll be guiding you through the ins and outs of what it takes to shine on the stage and life, while keeping it real and having a little fun along the way. From prepping for the big day to enjoying the post-show treats, we're going to cover it all. We'll also be talking about food, fitness, and how to balance this unique lifestyle with our everyday lives. Plus, we'll be inviting some special guests to join us on the show, fellow competitors, coaches, and others in the industry who can share their wisdom and stories with us. And of course, we'll be getting personal and sharing our own experiences, successes, and struggles as we train and compete in this exciting world of fitness competitions. So grab your favorite glass of bubbly and let's get ready to dive into today's episode of Champagne Games. What's going on, guys? Coach Kiki. Coach Beckton, back for another episode of Champagne Games. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we are <Everyone's> watching. <laughs> we are back from Charleston. Back from my first national show of the year. Coming yeah. home with a second place win. Yes, ma'am. Junior USA's is always so fun. Like it's in Charleston. Um, and it's just like good vibes. It 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 was it yeah. Lo- I love that show. Like that was, I mean, it was just like so small. I th- I mean, I think that's why I loved it. Like it was small, it went fast, and then also like we got there. And then it was like time to go on stage, which I, I love when that happens. Like, I don't like sitting and waiting around at all. No, because that's when girls just tend to do stupid things or like walk around in their heels for hours. I'm like, yo, why do you have your heels on right now? Um, Um, Or they're they're pumping up early. They pee 5 billion times. So they screw up their tan. Like y'all literally just like walked in and we were like, all right uh time to go on the other side <laughs> Dude, can, can you imagine if my makeup would had been at 10 20 no 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 <laughs> 3 a.m was the best time slot i could have taken and i actually fell back asleep like yeah it was great love the makeup and it like made me less stressed that i didn't have to worry about like it's like okay your makeup like that morning went so like quick quick and it was just yeah. like all right you guys went and got tanned you mm-hmm. came back you made a meal and then I don't even know what we did we were just like well, yeah and then I was just we, ready yeah I was like were, you were probably I don't know what you were doing either looking at other people or doing cardio or something but I was like sitting in bed with my eyes closed and I had like one of my hype songs on I was just like sitting there all chill but it's like this like hard freaking song <laughs> i love that I you're was, like uh, i'm on the inside but like inside you're just like let's go crazy. let's go <laughs> i was surprised like i was because you know my lap in st louis it was just like so chill or i was so chill i didn't know if i would be able to like have like do that again just because like stakes were so high but I felt good on show day like I love how Ben kept checking on me or like or stop stressing we're like she's not yeah <laughs> yeah not. I think he was stressing <laughs> he stresses he's himself. like this bitch is not stressing so there's something is wrong <laughs> yeah I saw a TikTok of some girl um and she was like people who like play with their hair or do all these things. Like if there's absolutely like nothing chaotic going on, they're going to like, just do this to like make chaos. So like, I think that's Ben, if there's no chaos going on, he like needs to make it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But we had a good crew. Like, so it was um, coach Ben. And then he had his wellness girl, Caitlin, who won the overall with you. And then one of his other bikini pros, uh, Daniela, she had a client, Caroline, 
Um, so we each had one client. Yes. It was like a good, it was just a good like group of six people. It was great. I, I loved it. Caroline, that was the first time meeting her. She was awesome. We like totally clicked. Obviously, Caitlin, I met in St. Louis. We clicked. I love how I like come out of every show with like a new best friend. <laughs> ah, you're frozen. Oh, you're good. You're, you're frozen a little bit. Am I still frozen? You're still frozen. No, now you're not. Hang on, I'm getting an internet connection is unstable. Son of a bitch. Are we good? <laughs> Which is why you're moving. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, that is why I'm moving. Can you see me? Can you hear yeah. me? Can you see me? Yes. Yes. So um, anything else that you want to really like highlight from juniors? Um, I am just like, I obviously second place is not like I didn't go there to get second place but I'm like so happy with it and I feel like I needed to get second place and like it just like lit this fucking fire inside me and because I had convinced myself I wasn't gonna do another show no matter what happened like right away at least um and then just Ben saying like, yo, you are next in line. This is your, t this is your time. Like go fucking get it. So yeah. that, and then it just like even hyped me up about getting back to work. And cause I took the last couple of weeks off from like client calls. Um, but now I'm just like, it's like go time with everything. Like finish this prep, fucking get back to work. Um, just like execute that was my word of 2024 and that's what we have to do so I'm hyped about it I'm very I'm like still kind of mind blown like I just got second place at a national show like yeah. that that's huge like because it seemed now I believe I think I needed it for that too like now I believe that it's possible like I am in the top like we're so close. So I'm sorry, I keep itching my nose. Um, but yeah, I'm just like I said to you before we started podcast or before we started recording, like people are like pussyfooting around me and not like congratulating me because they they're probably like scared that I'm just gonna be like pissed. I'm like, dude, hello, I I got second place. Yeah, at a fucking national show. I was this close to getting. I my know. Car. I think some people are like oh I'm sorry and it's like what no like no second place like I think sometimes when we get so like caught like some girls get so caught up in the placement or the pro card that like they just like get so devastated when they mm -hmm. don't get that first and it's like yo you should still be so happy getting top five at a national show yeah you know, that's huge it like is. it means that you're getting closer to where you know to that pro level like it's going to happen when in God's time you mm -hmm. know and there's going to be a reason why you turn pro at a particular show yeah um, you know it's it just it is what it is and you know I wish people especially newer competitors like you've been in the circuit longer um than some most of these girls but when you're like first into it, it's like you, you want that pro card immediately. Mm -hmm. Like I, I mean, I wanted it immediately, but like it took me seven national shows and four mm -hmm. years yeah. like of do like this, I eat, sleep, breathe bikini. I mean, and I still do. And I think like, it kind of makes me upset when I see other girls who are upset about their top five placing like yeah yo this is your first national show or even if it's like your second or third national show getting top five is still really really good yeah because when you first start competing like you just like don't know like what the people look like or even maybe what you're supposed to look like yeah you might look good but like dude these girls are big like 
I remember at North Americans two years ago, like looking at all the competitors, I'm like, oh, wow, these girls are massive. <laughs> like, it's just, it, like you don't understand until you're in it for a while. Um, yeah. Which. And then, like, once you get your pro card, like, you're back at the bottom. Yeah. So, like, I mean, it took me a while to get my pro card and I still wish I probably would have had some time on the, you know, regional national circuit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, 2020 was like a shit storm. I did all the national shows to turn pro. Um, but like once you, once you turn pro, like you're, you're at the bottom. So yes. enjoy being like the top dog of the NPC. Cause nothing right. is wrong with that. No mm -hmm. one looks down to you just because you're an NPC competitor versus a pro. Like, right. Dude. It's not like once you turn pro, you're going to get all this fame and, <laughs> and stuff. You know? right. <laughs> oh, like it's, that's just not how it is. I would, I have loved to, you know, get a whole bunch of sponsors once I turned pro. Yeah. But like, that's not, you have to work at it. <laughs> well, also it's not like there's so many NPC competitors too, with like a big following and a lot of sponsors. So it's not like you need that to be successful. Um, no, you don't need to like validate it. No. Like, yeah, I feel it's gonna feel great when it happens, but please do not rush your time in the NPC. Yeah, I mean, you literally can't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> rush. Like, there are obviously a couple of genetic anomalies who are going yeah. to go into their first national show and win, but that's not the case for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. by any means. Um, you know, when I got my pro card, um who was in my, like, I still remember the, the girls who were in my top five and they haven't like, um, Maria, right. Is that her name? I'm so, I, I don't know. I'm still in IG jail, so I can't like look people up. Oh. Um, but there were still some people who like just got their pro card last year in 2023. Yeah. yeah. It's a fucking journey um but I think like that I already see it like that like getting second here is going to just like make it that much better when it happens so yeah, yeah. but yeah next plans we're less than a month out now what is yeah. it so we're we going to Chattanooga yeah that okay. was um Another thing, like the judges saying that, you know, having Mo, Mo pull me aside, like after and tell me to go there, like, okay, Mo, Joe, and Sandy. Yeah. I mean, it was like awesome. Oh, I also was thinking, I put a side by side from the Minnesota show to Junior USA's and like my front del, I like my feedback two years ago front delts like my front delts look so much better so I mean obviously I have, a, I have some more glutes as well but we can always improve in the glute department <laughs> a never-ending game it's so cool to see. yeah it's a never-ending game yeah. it's so cool to just see like everyone's you know transformations from like I mean you won the overall at the Minnesota show I mean you yeah looked, but like damn you looked so good on Saturday <laughs> yeah I, I love I love it I'm I'm proud of it so on yeah, to it, the next one yeah it was just a good good weekend like we said it was quick final starting at 3 p.m is like music yeah, to my ears we were like we we were ready at 6 30 to go yeah, out for dinner that's amazing that is amazing especially in charleston because it's like a sleepy town yeah i was thinking about that with uh the show sorry junior nats with like the super show after where they have like the pros first i was thinking well i we talked about like how late that was gonna be and then like 
it would be it's it would be so strange to like do your NPC show and then like get on the pro stage like that thought is like wild it's like oh here's all these babies that just won their pro card you're gonna look you guys are gonna look like babies next yeah. <laughs> I love it and I'll talk to Ben and be like so like can we get like this pro posing routine ready or what <laughs> a matter of 30 minutes yeah oh yeah, but yeah I felt happen. I didn't forget to do my front pose <laughs> at finals no everything was <laughs> hit yeah it was a good weekend yeah yeah we had a lot of, a lot of time just to like hang out in charleston well in the yeah. hotel but and go shopping <laughs> yeah we went shopping we went to trey's gym several times um yeah charleston is just so cool like i've competed there several times i've coached there i've had posing seminars there it's just a cute little town um mm -hmm. Really it, good. it was fun I mean like going out after was fun too or like seeing downtown even though we literally just like walked down the street <laughs> but bunch of all good southern things men. yeah what? bunch of southern men <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, no one's found me on Instagram <laughs> I know See, I have to just go back to Charleston <laughs> yep <laughs> but, uh, maybe we have some move. huh maybe that's where I should move yeah I mean I'll go Hell yeah. uh, so we have some questions that we we were going to record a podcast when we were in Charleston and then we just didn't do it we thought yep so we're gonna go through these questions now um these are from yeah like last week um all right First one, how did you and Beckon meet and become best friends? <laughs> Dude, I fucking love this story. And well, when I couldn't post on Instagram on Tuesday, I was going to put for my tits up Tuesday post. I was going to talk about how like competing has brought me together with so many like badass women. Fuck me. You're frozen. I'm frozen. You were can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, I don't know what all that you caught, but I was trying to post about this on Tuesday for Tits Up Tuesday, and then Instagram wouldn't let me fuck post. So fuck Instagram, dude. What is happening? Um. Anyways, we met when I needed a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this was, we started working together in February of 2021. I, Kiki had just started, uh, coaching with the team that shall not be named. And, uh, you had like a 30% off deal. Cause you were a new coach. I was like, so I reached out and then I like bought it that day. And then we worked together for a year. Did Nashville Fit Show, got first. And then when I was uh, going through a divorce, I well, I, like, I felt obviously I fell in love with bodybuilding and competing and fitness and nutrition and everything. So I was like, hey, I don't really know what to do, but like, I need a job. And I was wondering if you have any like recommendations or like, what should I do as far as like certifications? And then it was. She, and then we went to Tanya's show and she offered me a job and then I moved out there and then we became besties. Really? <laughs> it was just my birthday. It was my birthday weekend when we, um, it was this past weekend to the date, two years yeah, ago. When, when we drank too much on my birthday <laughs> during our prep. Yes. <laughs> too many marks. But yeah, ever since then, best friends. Yep not some crazy story it was like a trust thing like 1000% yeah. like she didn't know I could have been fucking crazy <laughs> it's all like she just I mean I am but like all we did was talk through email and to the, until that point we met once in Nashville and then 
the next time I saw you in person was Tanya the show and you offered me a job and a house to live in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so that goes on to our next question. Uh, will the iconic duo ever live together again? Maybe like when we're seniors. Yeah. Like senior citizens. I think we should do that. Absolutely. It depends where life takes us. The yeah. world is the, our oyster, like for both of us right now. So who knows where we'll end up? Here's a plan. You get married and buy a big property. <laughs> and, then okay. live, and then I'll live in your guest house. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. See, the tables turn. <laughs> um, If you could train with anyone in the world, who would it be? Probably Brett Contreras. That's a good one. I mean, like, because he would help me build my glutes. Or, like, the mind pump guys. Oh, yeah. Probably Sal Stefano because they're so fucking smart. They teach me everything. Like, put yeah. your brain in my head. Um, what about you? I don't know. Corey, <laughs> just kidding. I trained with him before. <laughs> I was gonna say it. I was like, I bet she says Corey. <laughs> I mean, he Dana Lynn Bailey. Let's. I, that's that. what I guessed you were gonna say. I'll say Dana Lynn Bailey because Corey, Corey Gregory, and Dana Lynn Bailey are my top two. Yeah, people are gonna be like. So yeah, hell yeah, I would totally turn to Dana Lynn Bailey. Yeah, I love that. What is your go-to post-show meal? I mean, I don't really have one. Either steak and champagne or a burger and fries. Like and champagne. Well, usually not a burger and well, it's all, champagne is a given. Um I usually get a burger and fries like the night before, so I don't need that post-show. Um yeah. We got sushi this last time. Yeah, I don't. Was... There's not there. Yeah, there wasn't like something I was sup like super yeah. craving. Yeah. Other than that freaking brown blondie that Tika made, I would I would have that for every post show. That's my exactly. new post show meal. Yeah, that was so good. So phenomenal. Uh, Daniela, she was the other bikini pro that's under Ben. She has this side business called Tika's Brownies. And they're like, you know, the specialty brownies. Holy cannoli. The one that she brought was so good. It was banana bread blondie. And it had banana bread pop tarts, biscoff. Marshmallow it. cream. Mar oh, it was so good. I only the texture was amazing. Flavor. Everything 10 out of 10. So at Tika's Brownies, go. What is it. your go to post show meal? <laughs> meatloaf and French fries. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Anything meatloaf. Hell yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, that's all I want is meatloaf. I mean, I literally have told um, Alfie's in Granville that I was like, I mean, I don't crave, I don't really care about any type of food. I told you, I literally just started putting sauce on my food this past week yeah because when it was in the improvement season I was just shoving it down my throat and I didn't mm -hmm. care what it tasted like but I still I would take Alfie's turkey meatloaf any day yeah that shit is bomb. so biggest prep craving mine is Alfie's meatloaf um and a donut probably I, dude, I, I guess like my it, it's cinnamon rolls <laughs> yeah yes and you're going to get one today? I'm going to get one today. Quick trip cinnamon rolls. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm too early in the game to have prep cravings. If I did, we're in trouble. Yeah. I'm still yeah. 135 pounds, baby. <laughs> Lightweight, baby. Yeah. Um. All right. Last question from Miss Abby. Uh, favorite bodybuilder you look up to? Kiki. I mean, like... I we had this conversation 
but like, I don't, I don't know anyone personally. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to say that I look up to someone that I don't know personally, like, sure. It's cool. You can have a good physique and you can win a bunch of shows, but you could be a piece of shit person. So I don't know. I would I say up to Kiki and myself. Yeah. Yeah. Like in terms of, I mean, there's a lot of like bodybuilders that like, I like, um, Brett Wilkin, the guy that we met in St. Louis. Um, if you're a good human, then I will, will I, it's not necessarily I look up to them. Cause like, it's weird for me, like Laura Lee's younger than me. So like, I don't yeah. necessarily look up to her. Right. Like what I want her physique. Yeah. But I don't like look up to her. So like I yeah. look up to people who are like older than me. So mm-hmm. like the, the one pro at my very first pro show can't remember her last name because I can't look it up on Instagram, but her Instagram handle is Jess Fit Vet. She's mm-hmm. the master's competitor. She's been to the Olympia. Um, she wore like the hot pink suit last year. Oh, yeah. She's a veterinarian, which is why the Jess Fit Vet, but she's coached by body um, Kimoto. Mm-hmm. Um, she's one of my favorite humans. She's just so sweet yeah and she's a good person that see that is worthy of looking up to like if and I think that's another thing just a a side note like being a good per like be a good person backstage like be someone that is helpful and encouraging and like sportsmanship huge um congratulate other people like just be a decent human backstage I know it's like show day and stress is high but like care about other people it would be good if that could go into the judging factor but that would be great um you had a couple questions mm -hmm. well how we kind of did a whole podcast about this how to enjoy vacation slash a drink on prep by being present with the people around you and if you find it necessary to track a drink into your macros but that's you know like when I went to Mexico we determined like I was not focusing on prep or tracking macros when I was there because that trip was like big for me and I just wanted to be present and not be worrying about tracking my macros perfectly in Mexico when there's limited food options available. Um, but like, it's just a decision that you have to make whether you're going to be on your shit or not. And you have to be okay with whatever happens. Yeah. And game. Yeah. Plan. Talk to your coach and like, kind of yeah. plan it out. We, Cause we fully we planned it out the Mexico oh. trip. Like we knew that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. We knew that was happening. Yeah. So we, we knew, Hey, we're going to work hard until this point and then reevaluate when we come back. And honestly, like you were ready early for your yeah. show, which is why we bumped up to St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so it didn't you know, like, you just got to make that decision. Yeah. What is important to you? And yeah, just know that drinking will mess with you for a few days at least but that's Mm -hmm. up to you but you can enjoy a vacation without drinking or eating pasta (laughs) (laughs) which is what everyone seems to want (laughs) yes um okay what is a hot take that you have on something I came up with one last night actually I had two um A hot take I have on something is why do you need to, okay, like react to Instagram stories? Like I have so many people that will like, it's not even liking it. Like if you're going to do anything, just like it. 
but like when you react to it and like do a laughing face or heart eyes or fire or whatever then I get a dm about it mm-hmm. and like I have so many dm threads of just people reacting to my stories and I'm like why <laughs> Like, I don't even, like, like them reacting to it. Like, you know, like, part of it. <laughs> Dude, thanks. I don't know. That's my hot take. I have so many hot takes on a lot of things. Like. Same. <laughs> like, where do I, where do I even begin um I know and there's so many different like categories of hot takes that there could be yeah Um, I think one of my um I'll give a couple so a weighing yourself in the gym at 3 (laughs) p.m with all your clothes on that is something that's so fucking stupid um paying someone and not following what they're saying and then getting mad that you're not making progress. Um, that kind of relates to the second one that I wrote down, like people, and we talked about this, like not even giving it the old college try. Like this shit takes time, whether you are a competitor or a lifestyle client, like if you don't make this a lifestyle and like actually learn it and not just rely on someone telling you what to do you are never going to be successful if you don't realize that it's you have to be patient and you have to actually do the work and learn how to do it then you're not and then it's just going to be another like oh I tried this for three weeks and it it's not working so I'm done yeah um I mean, I could rant for a long time about hot takes on things. So we'll just keep it at those two because. (laughs) Good call. Get my cortisol even more. (laughs) That's all the questions I had. We'll end with the hot takes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And boys are dumb. (laughs) Uh, Yes. (laughs) Facts. Oh. oh, and side note, if anybody knows how to get an Instagram back, please just hit me up. Uh, you can't hit me up in my DMs. <laughs> so me on feel Facebook. free to uh, email me. I sound so old. Coach yeah. at coachkikilfg.com. There you <laughs> go. Please. <laughs> you can still find me on Instagram, hopefully for now, <laughs> at Beckin underscore bikini. Um yeah, reach out to us if you have any questions. You can also contact her through me on Instagram if need be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Back to assistant coach Batchett back in. <laughs> aye, aye. Yes. All right. Well, well, we will uh come back next week with something else. It's a surprise to you and us. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Sorry for oh, having great, sorry for having great tits and correct opinions on everything. I need one of those. Yeah. Bye yeah. for self. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We out of here. All right. Bye. What's up, guys? Coach Kiki here. I just wanted to thank you for listening to this episode of Champagne Gains. If you loved this episode, please make sure you do all of the things. Like, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review, and share with your champagne bestie. Champagne Gains is also brought to you by Coach Kiki LFG Gym Gear. Unlock the full power of your workouts with Coach Kiki's Let's Fucking Grow hip bands, long resistance bands, cable ankle straps, and hip thrust pads. For all of your sprinkle booty gains, check out CoachKikiLFG.com. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers.